Hello, and welcome to this session where we'll be looking at the new Shopify Connect app that Microsoft have released in version 20.1. This was due to come out in the main release back in April, but it was delayed slightly by Microsoft. Worth noting as well, this is only available in the SaaS version of Business Central. It's not currently available as an on-prem extension. Um, this may come as no surprise to you. Obviously, Microsoft now adopted this cloud-first approach. So everything they're doing now, they're releasing into the cloud solution primarily. Uh, and if it is backly compatible with on-premise, then they're doing that as well. So be aware of this when looking at this and other Power Platform integration pieces that have been released recently. So if you have a SaaS environment of Business Central, you'll probably notify this new Shopify tab has appeared up at the top here. Um, Microsoft made a mistake and released this into every live environment when in, in theory it should be something that you install. So they've made a note of this and going forward that type of thing shouldn't happen anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a brief look at the setup in Business Central, um, flip into the Shopify store that we've created, just a little temporary one that we've set up. One of our uh, apprentices, Robert, has done a great job of creating that. And then we'll go through a couple of orders, push the order through to Business Central, process them in Business Central, and then see what happens in Shopify. Okay, so the first thing we have is each company in Business Central, you can associate with multiple shops in Shopify. So here we've got it set up and linked to our Dynamics demo account. There is a bunch set up to go through um, to say how you want the two systems to integrate. So whether you want the customers to be driven by Shopify or the customers to be driven by Business Central, likewise with the items. Once you've got that set up and created, you can then go through and determine what location you want to use for your Shopify stock. So for instance, if you've got multiple locations in Business Central, you can say, I want to use this location as being the location that shows my available inventory to Shopify. This allows you to sort of partition off some of your stock and just use that stock up on the web. Um, so you specify that in the locations, you can determine what products you want to share into Shopify. So in the products page, you go here and you can then activate and add items that you want synchronized up to the Shopify account. You don't have to do this individually. There is a process you can go through where you can add items. It asks you to specify some filters and it will then bulk add items into this list. You can also map shipment methods. So if you ship overseas, you can map the different shipping methods such as free on board um, to shipment methods within Shopify. You can map payment methods. So depending on the different payment methods you've got, card payments, gift cards, et cetera, you can create payment methods within Business Central if they're not already there, and then map those to Shopify types. Um, we'll come back to orders later on. We also have customer templates. So Shopify allows you to both check out as a guest. So you don't need to log in. You just provide an email address and it doesn't create you an account. You can process the order that way. But you can also create an account and log into Shopify and then see your past orders, your status of your existing orders and the like. In that instance, when it creates you a customer in Shopify, you can get it synchronized and create your customer in Business Central. When it does that, it will then use a customer template to ensure that the customer is created in Business Central correctly. Where you allow people to check out from Shopify as a guest account, you can also specify a default customer that it will use. So down here, we have a default Shopify customer. And all that means is any sales orders that are guest checkout sales orders will be created against that customer. And then on the individual orders, it will overwrite the customer name and the customer address details with the details provided by the guest when checking out from Shopify. Again, we'll look at that all a little bit later on. There's then a series of synchronizations. So you can synchronize products, you can synchronize product images. So if you have a, an item with a picture in Business Central, it will synchronize that picture up to Shopify. You can use more pictures in Shopify, but you can only synchronize a single image between Business Central and Shopify. Uh, you can sync the inventory. So this is kind of a one-way process. It will sync the inventory from Business Central to Shopify. And then in Shopify, it maintains a running total. So if Shopify sells three items, it will deduct those three items from the inventory at last received from Business Central. So there is a few things you need to work around there um, in regards to when you time the inventory syncs to, sh to Shopify, but that's something we can discuss with you based on your business processes. You then got the synchronization of the customers and the synchronization of payouts. Obviously, Shopify has out of the box a number of uh, payment processes you can use. So you can use WorldPay, SagePay, PayPal, uh, and probably about 30 or 40 different payment processes. That is all handled on the Shopify side, 
And what it then does is push through effectively the payment receipt to Business Central. That then means you can uh, do your bank reconciliation from your bank statements to reconcile and close those entries. Okay, let's go and flip into Shopify now and have a quick look at the functionality there. We're not gonna focus on the Shopify functionality. That's not what we're here for. We're just gonna show the integration piece primarily. So here we are on the front end of our Shopify store. Um, as you can see that we've got a number of featured products here. So we can see various items that you might be familiar with from the Cronus database uh, with the images from the Cronus database that have been synchronized up to the Shopify store. Uh, you've got the basic Shopify features, so you can search for items, you can log into your account and you've got your shopping cart there as well. It's worth noting as well with the items when they synchronize, you also get the item attributes from Business Central synchronized up to Shopify. And you can then search on those as well. So for instance, if I want to search on wood items, it then presents me a list of any items which have got wood as one of the attributes. So again, a little bit of functionality that allows you to take some of the data you've already got set in your business central system uh, and utilize it on Shopify. So we're gonna go through and buy one of these. So I'm gonna buy this Athens desk here. I'm gonna buy it now. And I'm gonna go through the process of buying it without logging in. So this is me a guest checkout process. So in here, I enter some basic information. I'll ask for an email to be sent to this demo admin account. I'll put in our address at Dynamics Consultants. Continue to the shipping page. I think it's in the options of the shipping that I've got set up in the Shopify uh, system. At the moment, I've got only two basic ones. One is free if it's over £50 sale, and one's, I think, five ninety nine if it's less than £50. So I continue to the payment screen. Now you can also use gift cards here. So Shopify allows you to buy gift cards, and then you can synchronize the gift card payments back to Business Central as well. So I'm entering my demo number. Tell I'm using the same billing address the same as the shipping address uh, and pay for it. So this process, when I go through, this is running a, a dummy payment. Um, so it's checking the, the bank payment details, taking the order, and then storing it. So that's my confirmation. So this is all standard Shopify functionality. Then what will happen is in the background, Business Central runs a synchronization process. I've got it set up. So every five minutes, it'll go off and retrieve any orders from Shopify and bring them back. And likewise, the synchronization of customers and items, et cetera, are on a timed schedule. So if we go back to Business Central now, we can see what appears in Business Central. In Business Central, we're gonna go and find the Shopify orders. So the Shopify orders are an intermediary stage. Once the orders come from Shopify to Business Central, it creates the orders here. If we then click in these, you can then see basic information. So we can see who the customer is, what the items are they've ordered, the shipping costs, etc. It's worth noting the shipping cost, there is mapping on the Shopify connector setup that allows you to specify the GL accounts for the shipping charges, which we'll see in a moment. From here, you can also see risks. So Shopify automatically carries out a risk assessment on any order that it receives. So that's based on various pieces of information like the credit cards used, the shipping locations, the number of attempts to make payment, et cetera. That information is passed down so you can see it within this order in Business Central, which I think is a really nice piece of functionality as well. And we can also go off and see the sales order itself. So the sales order is the Business Central sales order that's been created from that Shopify order. In here, we can see the customer so it's gone against our default shopify customer but it's put in the customer's name and address details we then got a description line saying which shopify order it relates to the items purchased and the shipping charges which were zero in this case but it still inserts a line for zero shipping costs so from here you can then carry out your normal shipping process for a sales order so this uh, location that we're using, the main location, has no warehousing functionality. So I'm going to carry out a very simple process. I'm going to reopen the order to start with. I'm going to put in some shipping information. So for instance, uh, the shipping agent code, we use DHL for the example. And we're going to sign at the standard overnight delivery and put in a package tracking number. So if you're sending it out to a customer, typically give them a package tracking number. We're then going to post 
and ship and invoice this order. What will happen once it's been shipped and invoiced is the synchronization in the background will then take place and export it out into Shopify. We're now going to move back into Shopify, but this time we're going to go into the back end version of Shopify. So this is the administration area. Now, if we click on the orders on the left hand side, we will see all the orders being placed through Shopify. Um, most of these have gone back to, well, in fact, all of these have gone back to our, our business central implementation. Here we can see number four, order number 1004. If I click on that, you'll see the status has been updated. We can say it's been fulfilled. So this is now being completed as far as Shopify is concerned. And if you scroll down, it keeps a nice little timeline saying what's happened with this order. So you can see it's gone to business central, it's been edited, it's been fulfilled. And also that it sent an email out. So it says here, I sent an email out to the customer with the uh, confirmation email. And you can see the shipping information there as well, the tracking information. So we're now gonna go out to Outlook and have a look in Outlook and we should see those emails that have been received through Shopify from Business Central. So here we've got our order confirmation. So this is the original confirmation when we placed the order saying these are the items that you've ordered. And for some reason, it's gone to my junk email. I've got a shipment order there as well. So this is the shipment to say, here is your shipment. This is the tracking number. And you can see there you've got the DHL information with a link. If I click on it, it will take me out to the DHL track and trace website. That won't work, unfortunately, because it's only a dummy number. But you can see that the process works. It sends out the email automatically for you with the link in it. So I think that's lovely functionality. It starts giving a bit of a seamless process there. If you want to ship, uh, sorry, sell online and then ship through your backend business central, you've now got a solution out of the box, quick and easy to set up. That you can get running with literally in a matter of hours. Um, obviously, if you want to refine the processes, if you want to ensure that your shop looks perfect for you and that the processes work for you and your business, it takes a bit more effort. But from a basic principle, it's very quick and easy to get set up. So hopefully that's proved interesting to some of you. Um, if you're interested in this at all, please talk to myself or Catherine about it and we can take it from there. Thank you very much.